Good morning and welcome to my shop. My name is Randy Woods and in today's video I'm going to give a tour of my shop. But before I do that I would like to recognize a few people. I've been doing this channel for about a year now and a lot of people think this is a one-man show which isn't true. Um, I want to recognize the people that worked very hard uh, to put this channel together. Uh, first my, my writer and my producer Randy Woods. Come on, come on up here. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Randy. Randy is a very hard worker. He puts a lot of work into this show. He's, he's the one that comes up with most of the ideas. And uh, really, this show wouldn't be what it is without without Randy. Also, I want to mention uh, the guy back there behind the camera. Yeah, can we get a can we get a shot of Randy? Yeah. Yeah. Guy behind the camera. Third on the list, which is uh, uh, pretty critical, is my my editor, uh, Randy Woods. Would you come up here? Uh, Randy, uh, aside from being ridiculously good looking, he does uh, all of my edits and he works he works very hard. And now that I've recognized you guys, I want to thank you all for, for all the hard work uh, this last year. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and turn the shot. Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah, let's, let's, let's yeah, do it. Let's, let's do it. My shop is a 24 by 40 foot still framed building, which is a really nice size for a hobby shop. Now on this side of the shop is where I keep my bench and I keep most of my, uh, my hand tools. Um, I've been working out of this shop for about two years now. When I first bought it, there was uh, shelves just, just everywhere. And uh, I've, I've, I've kept some of those shelves, but I've taken a lot of them down. I've replaced them with pegboard just because I like to keep my I like to keep my tools uh, easily accessible and in sight. And so uh, back here, I've got some you know squares, mallets. Uh, my chisels are back here, and then over here on this wall, I keep my hand saws, hand planes, uh, spoke shave, there's some rasps up there, a couple of layout tools. Uh, I like keeping those handy. And then back here, I've got some. Uh, I keep a couple of bench jigs, a, a bench hook, and things that I use in conjunction with this bench. This really is a great area, and I really like working with hand tools, so I do, I do enjoy this right here. One of the upgrades from the last shop is this shop actually has a, a small uh, restroom in it, which that is absolutely uh, amazing to have that. Never knew I would enjoy it. Having my own restroom out in the shop. We've got a full-size refrigerator just to keep mostly bottled water and Gatorade. Uh, above the fridge, I made a little bit of a uh, a little bit of storage for uh, mostly just cutoffs and scraps. And as I was uh, putting lumber up here, I realized that. I needed to reinforce this, so I made this wall right here. And once I had this wall, um, this wall in place, I realized, hey, this might be a good place to incorporate like a French cleat system. It's actually pretty handy to have, and that's where I keep most of my drill bits uh, and any other accessories that I have for my, my drill press. This is a 17 inch drill press. Uh, it's, I mean, a drill press is a drill press, so it's, it's nothing too fancy. Uh, moving along, this crinkly dust collector I've had now for, uh, I've had this probably for a year and a half, and I'm actually really, I'm really happy with this, this uh, dust collector, and I'm, I'm probably gonna do a, uh, a tool review on that a little bit later. Um, over here I've got my MFT table. Now, I really like the, uh, the Festool MFT. Um, I don't own a lot of Festool uh, tools because they are a little bit pricey. Uh, the first tool I picked up was the uh, track saw. I got that years ago and I, I love that saw and since I've, I've bought a few tools. Uh, but the MFT table is, uh, is very handy. I work on this all the time, uh, especially for uh, sanding, routing, holding down smaller pieces. Um, I use it a lot for, I'll set my table saw up, um, you know, for a certain rib cut and I'll go back and forth. I'll do my rib cuts over there and my cross cuts over here and uh, it just, it just kind of gives me more options. So I'm, very happy to have room for this. 
I have a 26 gallon Craftsman air compressor um, with a ceiling mounted hose reel. My planer is a 13 inch rigid and I'd really like to upgrade this, this planer. However, it has served me well over the years. I've been using it for roughly 15 years. It's one of the first tools that I bought when I started woodworking. My router table is one of my first projects. It's got a melamine top and I built the base for it. I keep a uh, two and one quarter horsepower Freud router mounted underneath. And I added this, this handy little drawer to keep all of my uh, bits. I don't do a lot of turning, but I do have an old 36 inch delta lathe that I, I do use it occasionally. And a Porter Cable bench grinder that I use primarily for sharpening lathe tools. I have a decent assortment of clamps, and the thing about clamps is good clamps are expensive and cheap clamps are frustrating. So this is really one of those ongoing uh, things where I try to upgrade my clamps. I'm constantly, I'm constantly trying to upgrade my clamps. And considering a, a K-body clamp runs about $35 to $40, and a, a, a decent selection of them, you're talking about a lot of money. Now I've also had, you know, these cheaper aluminum clamps from uh, Harbor Freight, which really are just a, they're, they're a pain. I mean, they'll get you by and um, like I said, I've used those, but I've slowly been replacing those. And, and I do that by, I, I try to once a month go buy a clamp or two. Um, that way the, the investment's not all right there up front. Um, but my most frequently used clamps are my K-body clamps and these F-style clamps. I use, I use the heck out of these things. And, you know, Home Depot actually carries these, and I think I was I think I was paying like 20 bucks for a set of four, and they're they're a pretty decent quality clamp. They're Bessies, and uh, I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, I highly recommend this clamp. Now, seat clamps, you can pick those up at Harbor Freight, and I think the quality is, is fine. I've, I've never had an issue with them, and I've, I've got quite a few uh, seat clamps. Now, I don't use a whole lot of seat clamps, um, but the ones I do have, I picked up at, at Harbor Freight, and uh, I think they're probably a couple of bucks a piece, and they work, they work great. My jet oscillating spindle sander gets a lot of use. I made this shelf several years back and I just keep various things on it, um, including a uh, first aid kit and this belt and disc combo from Harbor Freight. Uh, surprisingly, a, a pretty good tool. And I can't say enough about having a dry erase board in the shop. This thing is really handy. A lot of times during a project, I'll write down my measurements on the dry erase board and then uh, no matter where I am in the shop, I can just glance up there and kind of keep all that straight. Well, this whole area right here, I primarily use it for assembling bigger projects. But the great thing about this area is I have my tools set up to where they're, they're out of the way and I never have to move them. And if the weather gets bad, I can actually bring my, my pickup in here and park it. And that's, that's really the primary reason for the way my tools are set up the way they are. At the center of my shop is my table saw. Now this particular saw, it's got a one and three quarter uh, horsepower motor. Um, I consider that to be slightly underpowered, but I do uh, I keep uh, really good blades installed and it's, it's really not an issue. Um, it's got a 33 inch rip capacity, which is really nice. Um, I make all kinds of cuts. The table saw is not just for cross cuts and rip cuts. Um, I cut a lot of dados here. I cut tenons here. I've made raised panels on this saw. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of versatility. And what even adds to that versatility is the outfeed table. Now I built that, oh, it was, I don't know, probably seven or eight years ago, maybe. Now I made it big enough that it allows me to rip cut a full eight foot long sheet of plywood. And once I get past the saw blade, half of that material is still on the table. Um, so that provides a great amount of support. I also use it for an assembly area. I mean, I do all kinds of stuff on that outfit table. So that really, uh, that really added a lot of versatility to the saw. My joiner is nestled pretty close to my table saw. Now this is a six inch rigid joiner. 
Um, this is another one of those tools that I'd really like to upgrade. Um, but this this has actually been a, a pretty good tool over the years. I've had it for many years, and I've made a lot of projects with it. I purchased the 1412 Laguna bandsaw about two years ago, and I have to say, I love this saw. It really is a great machine at a great value. I most commonly use this saw for cutting curves, but I also use it for initial rip cuts and uh, occasionally uh, resawing. It's overall just a, a great saw and, and one of the most versatile tools in my shop. I really do like the Capex uh, miter saw. It's a little bit pricey, um, and it's probably a, a little bit overkill, but it's very accurate, and I really do like having it in the shop. Now, I've had it for uh, probably about seven years, maybe, and I really do like it, but what makes this saw really useful is this uh, miter station, this bench, and I built this maybe a year and a half ago, but uh, that's really changed the way I do a lot of things. Um, it just it's, it makes it very convenient. I break down a lot of boards right here, and I really do I really do like it. Of course, I built some storage underneath, and I just keep various uh, various tools and whatnot uh, underneath the miter saw. Now I've incorporated some some stop blocks. I've got a little flip stop right here. You know, I, I use that for uh, so I can make repeatable cuts. One thing I'd like to mention about this this miter saw is it's, it's so accurate that. I do come over here and I, and I do make final cuts here, uh, whereas before I had this, like if I was doing uh, 45 degree miters, um, I actually used a table saw sled uh, because most miter saws aren't, really aren't that accurate. Um, so this, uh, this, this saw, I mean, I, it, it's a good saw, I love it. My shop is always evolving and after working out of it for two years I'm really feeling at home. Well that concludes this shop tour. If you have any questions be sure to leave that down below. Uh, be sure to click on the subscribe button for future content and we'll see you next time.